First, we're going to uh, kick off with uh, Steve. I'm just going to ask you, um, can, could you kind of give us an overview of uh, why, from your experience, of why it can be quite difficult for parents to bring this up with their Yeah, I mean, and, and inter interrupt me if you, if you disagree, but um, I think you're dealing with your own cancer diagnosis yourself and, and, and the issues that come with that and thinking about yourself. And I think also as a parent, I think you also want to protect your children and, and not have to tell them about something as horrible as, as cancer can be. So I think the natural uh, reaction for, for many parents I've worked with is actually not to tell the children, try and protect them by not telling them. Um, but I think, you know, from, from some of the people that I've worked with, actually not telling them is probably not necessarily protecting them, can actually be more, more harmful. Mm. So. And, and so, um, can I start with you, Sandy? So, yeah. Sandy, is that, in your opinion, is it like the dif difficulty in talking to uh, yeah, your child? Yeah, it was, definitely, it was definitely a big thing to yes. talk to her about. Um, uh, yeah, after my first hospital stay, it was definitely, we definitely had to talk to her about it because mm. uh, she definitely needed something up after that. Beforehand, we did, we did keep it from her and yeah, it probably wasn't the best idea because uh, then we did actually have to have that big talk. Yes. And it could have probably been avoided. Yes. And how, how did you uh, set up for that, that big talk? What, what did you do, the steps that... Just took? kept it very calm, really. Just kept it, like, as low-key as possible. Yes. And didn't necessarily talk down to her. Just kind of didn't try and make it light, light heart of it, but didn't make it too much of a heavy thing. Yes. And just told her exactly what was going on. And being a two-year-old, she kind of just bumbled about. <laughs> yes, yeah, I can imagine. So what, yeah, what was her initial response? Um, when I came back from hospital, she was very clingy. Right. Because uh, uh, she knew there was something up. Yes. Um, and then um, after we had just, I kind of explained to her that it was nothing that she had done. It definitely, it definitely improved her mentality about it. Mm. Was that something you were concerned about that she might think that she had done something? Yeah. Like whenever she's, whenever she's gone away. Um, to her grand or something when she was really little uh, she would come back and she'd be very clingy mm. um, and I don't really know is yes yeah it's yeah. different thank you and, and Laura over to you about like the difficulty in talking about it is that something that you you were aware of yeah we, ne we never had a big talk right. um, my son was two and a half at the time and I was pregnant so he already knew there was a baby coming, then he knew it was a sister, and then it was like, oh, mummy's poor. And when you're pregnant, you go to hospital a lot anyway, a lot of yes. appointments. So I think in his mind, it was all just part and parcel of the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't shy away from telling him about it, but equally we didn't, he wasn't really old enough for us to sit down, sit him down and um, say, this. like he didn't know what cancer meant, so, um, you know, you, you tell an adult you have cancer and that has a lot of connotations, but yes. um, it was just brand new for him. And then in preparation for this, I asked him yesterday, do you remember when mummy was poorly? And he said, yeah, you had a poorly in your tummy. And I said, it wasn't in my tummy, it was here. And he said, in your heart. Um, and, I, and then he said, did I grow in your heart? And I said, no, you grew in my tummy. So it's just like, it's so confused. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, just didn't really yeah. know what was going on. But I think they're just, um, they're pretty amazing kids at taking things in their stride. Mm -hmm. um, like I didn't lose my hair completely, but I did wear scarves and hats. And when I just said, I'm just going to wear a, a hat for a while. And he was like, all right. You know, <laughs> um, they're, they're just like, you, they just accept what you tell them, I think. And yes. so um, I don't feel like he's been traumatized by it. Right. They're yes. very adaptable. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think it's this it's this balance, like what you were saying, but you want to be upfront and honest with them, but you don't want to scare them half to death. Like, no. You don't want them to think you're going to go away for good. And so mm. it's this balance, but like it is, mummy is poorly, and it's not just like when mummy's got a cold or, you know, mummy has to keep <clears> going to <throat> hospital. A lot, I, I asked people in um, Younger Breast Cancer Network how they talk to their children. A lot of people talked about chemo as um, like strong medicine or poison that c gets rid of the cancer um, yes, yeah. so it's just you know talking about it in terms that they can understand being as honest as you can but not um 
scaring them, mm. you know, as as yes. much as possible. I guess it, you, you're talking about like finding language that they they are going to be able to digest something that's not going to be <clears throat> something that's going to uh, put them on edge at different points and guessing and things. So. Yeah, and I think people have different approaches to that language yes. thing. Um, so the there's a book we I don't think we have here, but we were talking about before called Mummy's Got a Poorly. Yeah. Um, and that was written by a woman who um, didn't want to use the word cancer and she couldn't find a resource that, that didn't use the word cancer. Whereas the book I used, Mummy's Lump, does talk about cancer in it. So I think people have different approaches to what is and isn't and people know their children don't they so yes. um you know one of the women i spoke to had a son with special needs and so she 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 knew him and knew what and she said she took him to meet the surgeon and the surgeon showed him how to take mummy's temperature and things like mm. that so he could do practical things to help yes um so i think people responding to their what their own child mm. will understand yes yes yeah. And because I, 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 I am a child myself, and so, but I, I understand there is this thing of that they do will know something that and and see. Yeah, they generally, uh, um, and we, me and Jemima were talking about this, weren't we? That generally in research that's been done, children as young as three have a sense that something's wrong, and I mean, because things have changed, haven't they? You know, you're yeah. not there, you're in hospital, um, and I think having that conversation. Um, about what that might be is that you're able to reassure the child that it's they, the younger children will have magical thinking I think that when changes have happened it's because they've been naughty or because they've done something wrong um, and I think having a conversation about why there's been changes you can reassure children about you know that it's not their fault but also that what's going to stay the same and that they'll still be loved and it's not because daddy doesn't love you it's because um, mm. it's because of this thing that's happened and Sandy, you were saying, you, do you think, because you didn't um, tell your child right from the year off, mm. um, do you think there was something that she, she kind of knew? Did she think she had no? She, yeah, she definitely knew there was something up, because yes. obviously there's, after treatment I'd be kind of down for a couple of days, yes. so she would, she would know that I was ill. So yeah, that could definitely have avoided some angst by telling her sooner, mm. I think, so we definitely learned that. Yes, yeah. And, yeah. And although you mentioned quite early on, and obviously you had to have the birth and then have uh, like all, all, all your treatment as well, do you did do you think your your son who was two, do you think he knew things were going on? I think there were. I just I, I wonder how much he thinks it's just part of when you have a baby because yes, I'd, yeah. it was his first experience of me having another child, and my daughter was actually in. Um, special care for a couple of weeks after she was born yes and when we went to see her she was in an incubator you know and I said to my husband oh this might scare Joe and then we were like well but he doesn't know that this isn't just what normally happens when you have a baby mm. so maybe the whole cancer treatment as well maybe he just thinks that's the norm yes. when um, yeah. when you get a new brother or sister mm. but um, it, I think I, I reminded myself a lot at the time that he won't remember, like at the time we had to explain it to him, but because he was two, he won't remember any of it later on. So I don't think, um, oh, well, I don't think he will. Mm. I think he's too young to retain those memories. Yes, yeah. It, I guess there, there, are pro, there, there are pros and cons. We, Sandy, you've been talking about pros and cons of te telling them before and having that conversation. And Steve, can we, if we focus on the cons, first of all, of telling, mm -hmm. like, is, are, is like there... The cons. Yeah, are, yeah. Are, are there things that, like, uh, that, like, talk about how it is, like, not telling a child can be quite yeah. hard, is there? Yeah, I mean, I... Yeah, I think I think not telling a child. Can, I mean, the, the the overwhelming message coming out of all, all the, the research is that children want to be, when a parent's ill, informed and involved. So it's like you know they want information about what's happening and to understand what's happening within their ability at whatever age they have, but also to be involved. And you said like your was it your son wanted to help with mummy and things. So, so that's the way they can be involved. I know a lot of people who've got their children involved with shaving their head, mm. um, and I I, know, I think generally people shaving their own head before waiting for their hair to fall out. It's like a taking back control and then getting the kids involved with that <coughs> rather than them waking up one morning and mummy hasn't got any hair anymore. You know, if, if they see that happening and you to make it a game or, you know, explain, then that it's empowering, isn't it? And it's, it's involving them and... Uh, 
Because I think children, when they're parentistic, want to be involved and, and help in some ways, don't they? Mm. Yeah. You know, they want to, to the parent to, to feel that they, they care and that they, they want to help. Yeah. And you were using the word empowerment earlier, which I thought was a great way to describe it, and empowering the child to be part of what's going on. Because you, you lose a lot of control, when, all of you, when somebody's got cancer. Like, you're not in control of what's of the future of your family. And, mm -hmm. and so anything you can do for yourself and for your children to make them feel like they can help... Yes. I guess is... You know, like my son would bring me a picture sometimes that he'd done or um, and I think he felt quite proud to do those things to make me feel better. Mm. What type of things would he draw for you? Just scribbles. Scribbles. <laughs> I mean even now he's four and he right. can't really draw anything. Okay. Right. So he'd just bring me you know a page full of scribbles of colour. I just remember one time specific I have a, um, a bone strengthening infusion every six months that's the only treatment I'm still having. Mm -hmm. And after I had it the first time, it kind of knocked me off my feet for a couple of days. And I wasn't expecting it. it, was wor it I had a worse reaction than I did to chemo. And a, f a really good friend locally um, took him out for the morning and they went out to a cafe and had flapjacks and stuff. And then he came home and he had a picture that he'd done. Um, and I think he, he felt like he was helping, you know. Yes. And he was, because they do... like. It's, <coughs> it's really hard having cancer when you have young children because it's physically hard work, but they do also pull you through it, don't they? I think like give you a reason to get on with stuff. Like exactly, that. and you have to. Yeah. <laughs> like not only give you a reason <laughs> no to, choice. but you just don't have any choice. My daughter was a week old when I started chemo, mm. so like much as my husband shouldered a lot more than he would have done otherwise, I did have to get up and change nappies and. Couldn't, just wasn't any other choice and yes. also they like when you have young children you do laugh every day I think mm. even in the worst even in, so funny. yeah so even in the worst times they do make you laugh every day so I think for me that was a real help even though the physical slog was mm. was quite intense the, the scribbles made it <laughs> that's yeah. Yeah. they might not yeah but the, the <laughs> They're the things that are keeping going. That's great. Yeah. And uh, so I mentioned slightly about the, the cons and the, 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 the what. What's so I was going to say in terms of also the cons. I suppose one of them would be is the children finding out in other ways as well, mm -hmm. and so yes. you not being able to kind of control mm -hmm. what they know. And I know of children who've overheard things on the you know people on the phone and hearing people in other rooms being distressed. And I think it, having a conversation with children can kind of minimise some of those worries, can't they? Really, because I think in this day and age of Facebook and everything, you know, information gets around and you... And they've got good imaginations, kids, so if they hear half of something, then... They'll fill in the rest, won't they? Yeah. Mm. So, so we, we... But there are advantages then to, to telling them, and what, what see, from your, your, your point of research, and, like, what, what are, why are parents doing that? Why are they deciding to tell? What's the advantages of telling yeah, just that the, the children feel involved, they feel, you know, the, the gaps are filled in, they can have the, the correct information about what's actually happening rather than some misinformation that maybe they've heard from, other, overheard other people on the phone or at nursery and parents. So, um, mm. um, and it's also that, that, you know, we know that as children grow up, they, they do better if they've been involved um, and informed about what was going on with yes. the parents' cancer rather than being kept in the dark. Because mm. if, if we come from the assumption that generally children know something's wrong, not then knowing why that is, I think longer term could probably be more problematic for them. Mm.